Hello and welcome to our Huga Make Along check-in. My name is Claire and I am hosting this make along on my channel, The Mindful Knitter. Um, often I think I refer to it as the Mindful Knitter podcast because I do usually post podcast episodes every two-ish weeks. I haven't this winter <laughs> because it's been a winter. Um, so yeah, uh, first up, apologies for me being a little absent on YouTube for the last month. Um, I've just been uncharacteristically busy with work. Um, I was doing 12 hour days every day for a couple weeks and um, yeah, 10 or 12 hour days every day. Um, and then also uh, I was sick for a week or so. So. I've been absent, but if you want to check out our make along um, fun on Instagram, we have had some projects on there and I've been posting on there a bit over the last month or so. And our hashtag on Instagram is the, the mindful knitter Huga, which is spelled H-Y-G-G-E, Mal, M-A-L. <laughs> Um, that's our hashtag on Instagram. It is also in the description below the video if you want to um, because it's very long. I think maybe next year we'll do something shorter for our hashtag and I may rename the make along too. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I'm glad that you're here. Welcome. Uh, if you're new, I'm very happy to have you hang out with me for a while. I'm going to be sharing some cozy knitting and crochet projects from this winter uh, and just kind of be catching up and chatting about the cozy Huga things. And if you are part of the make along, I'm so happy that you're joining me. Um, it's been fun. Uh, it's been quiet, but that's okay because it's kind of part of winter is it is probably the most quiet season of the year. Um, so I'm just kind of embracing that a little bit. Let's see, anything else to note? If you wanna connect on Instagram, I am the.mindfulknitter on Instagram. And on Ravelry, it's the Mindful Knitter Pod. Um, and we do have a group on Ravelry as well. It's the Mindful Knitter Podcast group. So I think that is all of the stuff for today. This is not a normal podcast episode. This is just a check-in for the make-along. So I'm not in my usual podcasty corner because I wanted to just hang out with you guys today in my cozy corner of my living room, which is where I've been crafting all winter. Um, I thought that it would be nice to kind of show you what my kind of Huga setup is. Um, Alex got me some flowers. <laughs> I have flowers over there too. Um, he got them for me so that I would be surrounded by flowers while I was doing paperwork for hours and hours at a time. <laughs> and I've just kind of, you know, kept them around because they're nice. Um, I've got my uh, little chart stand that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and yeah, just some cozy things in my corner. I've got some fiber for spinning that I just got in the mail, which is exciting. Um, so yeah, this is just kind of what my atmosphere has been like all winter, <laughs> is what you are seeing right here. Uh, this has been it. So I would be very interested to see or to hear what you guys have been doing for coziness this winter. I'll talk a little bit more at the end about like activities and things that have brought some coziness to my winter, but uh, what have what have you guys been up to for coziness? What does your crafting corner look like if you have one? All right, is there anything that I have forgotten? We have one month left. I've got notes in my little making journal. <laughs> Um, we have one month left of the make along. Where do I put this? I think I'll just set it right here. March 20th is when our make along ends. So basically almost exactly one month until then. So another month of coziness and then springtime is upon us because May 20 or March 20th is the first day of spring in the Northern hemisphere. So yay, another month of coziness. I'm so excited. I'll talk about my projects. I keep looking over here because that's where my other projects are, but I'm wearing one. I'm not going to talk about these in super great detail because this is just a make along check-in. I'll talk about them in greater detail in the next podcast episode, which should be, fingers crossed, should be in the next week or two. But first I'll talk about this one. This is the Goldfinch pullover, or no, the Goldfish jumper, Goldfinch 
it's a bird, goldfinch jumper. Um, who is it by? I, oh, that would be a good thing to make a note of. I'll have it in the description below the video though. Um, I think it's ma made by Haley Bailey, or maybe it's just Haley Bailey is the designer and I think her Instagram is made by Haley Bailey. Uh, but I will have all of this information down in the description below the video. If you look at the video title and then you'll see there's something that says more and it is a different color <laughs> than the title, it's a button. So you click more and then all of the information will be down below um, about, you know, important stuff. So this is the Goldfinch jumper and I really love it. I did a split hem, which I don't think was in the pattern. But I basically just loved this crocheted jumper. I wanted something with bobbles. I wanted another cropped pullover to wear with long dresses because I wear long dresses a lot because pants are inconvenient. So I made this guy um, and he was super quick, maybe a week or two uh, for this. And I just love it. I used um, the upcycled alpaca from knit picks and the worsted weight. I know this lovely green is the sage colorway. Um, I'm not remembering off the top of my head what these two were. I think this was pistachio. It's a gray that has like a very slight greenish tint to it, but it's mostly gray. But I'm not remembering what this guy was. Um, yeah, I'm not remembering, but I just had uh, these skeins and stash. I didn't have enough of one color or even enough of two colors to make this. So I just kind of pulled what I had and threw it all together. And you can kind of see like on the back, it's more of the pistachio, which is like a strip of the sage. And yeah, I just made it work. And I really love this. I've worn it a lot <laughs> and it's just wonderful. I can't say enough good things about it. I am planning on making another one. It's been awesome and very cozy, very warm. It's um, an alpaca and um, acrylic blend. Oh, and wool. So this has been super warm. Very good. My next project to share with you guys is my Yarnicorn sweater. So this is, we're just gonna say I didn't use a pattern for this because I didn't really. Um, if, if we wanna, I don't know, if we wanna get an, a, a thorough idea, it's, I got the numbers for the cast on um, from the Arts Sweater by We Are Knitters. Um, but that's it, everything else I just kind of did because <laughs> I changed everything else about that sweater. I just used the cast on number because I have made the Arts Sweater in this yarn um, before. This is the Petite Wool by We Are Knitters. Um, so I made the art sweater in a different colorway with, with that yarn. So I knew that was the correct size. So I just used that for my cast on, but literally everything else I changed. I changed the hem, I changed the neck, I changed the sleeves, I changed the length, I changed everything else. <laughs> but this is my Yarnicorn sweater. This is the Yarnicorn colorway in the Petite Wool by We Are Knitters. And I love it. I will probably wear this guy maybe in the next podcast episode. I did these cute little like, uh, would it be like bishop sleeves? I think I've heard people call them like tulip sleeves as well, but um, they rapid decrease. And then I did kind of like a longer cuff at the end. And I also got hot chocolate on everything. Oh no, <laughs> hot chocolate's dangerous. I never knew. Okay, well. I'll be more careful as I'm flinging my mitts about. Perfect, okay. Well, anyway, so this is my Yarnicorn sweater and, or my Yarnicorn jumper, and it's basically the coziest thing in the entire world. It's so cozy. Um, I'm, I did make it a little longer, um, and then the sleeves are just perfect. I love these like longer, narrower sleeves because it keeps the sleeves away from my knitting needles. It keeps it out of the way when I'm cooking or doing things around the house. I did make this to be a cozy around the house during the winter pullover and it does the trick. So super squishy, super fun. Um, yeah, super warm and cozy and I love these happy, happy yarnicorn colors. <laughs> so that is my yarnicorn pullover. 
These are my DK socks. I did show these to you guys in the last podcast episodes, but they're done now. I'm not gonna show them to you super close up in great detail, other than maybe like, maybe like this, because they're dirty, because I wasn't planning on filming anything today. But then I just happened to have a, a bit of a break in the middle of the day, and I was like, ooh, I'll do a, a make-along check-in. So I did this like broken rib, um, Kind of texture on them and they're just scrappy DK weight socks and they're super dirty because I have three Great Danes and I live in the southeast of the United States so that means that winter is just mud season so these are real dirty but I did buy a fancy new mop the last week so my house is less dirty than it was but there's still it's three Great Danes and it's just the backyard is just mud so there's only so much I can do, <laughs> but I try. Uh, so those have been cozy. And then my last garment, uh, I just finished this a couple days ago and I did not, I've not woven in that end. But this is a cardigan. I really wanted a super warm, bulky, but not heavy cardigan. And I've been really enjoying crochet this winter. So I did make this up. Uh, this is not, I did not use a pattern for this and you can tell when it's on <laughs> but it doesn't matter I just I made it to wear around the house to be cozy and it also does the trick um, I used some of the skills that I learned from this pullover like how to do like crocheted ribbing um, and you know that kind of thing so I used the information from this pullover for this cardigan, but her design is much nicer than my made up <laughs> crochet cardigan. But I do like it and it is cozy. Um, I haven't completely, completely finished it. It hasn't been blocked um, and I haven't attached the buttons. I'm going to be making some little floral buttons to put on. Um, I have some floral fabric that I'm gonna try to mod podge onto some buttons that I have and uh, we'll see how that goes, but it does fit. It fits just fine. I've worn it a couple of times um, just around the house and it's great. The sleeve length is great because it's almost like a bra bracelet length sleeve. So it hits about like right here. So my sleeves are long enough to be worn, but they stay out of my way while I'm doing things. Um, and they're very poofy sleeves. It's just been a super cozy cardigan. So I'll get this blocked and I'll get the buttons put on it and I'll show it to you guys in greater detail in the next podcast episode. But I used, um, uh, I won't even try to guess what the yarn is that I used for this <laughs> because I don't remember. I know it's like an arrow yarn. It's one of those blown yarns. So it has uh, like, I think a nylon or an acrylic kind of almost like thin tube cage type situation and they blow the fibers into it so that it's super, super bulky and lightweight and warm. And this guy is cozy, so cozy. Love that. <laughs> it's great to throw on on top of everything. I love it. Um, and then my last finished object from my Huga make along <laughs> so far is this wonderful hat. This is the classic ribbed hat by Pearl Soho. And I knit this in the Gems Luxe, or sorry, this is Gems Luxe yarns in the, I think it's the Athena colorway. And it's just this beautiful, beautiful sparkle or speckles. And I love this hat. I've never really had a beanie. I've never really considered myself to be a beanie person, but I wear this a lot <laughs> and uh, it was quick. I just held the yarn double. I held fingering weight double it's for, because it's a pattern for a DK hat. And this has been awesome, uh, super cozy. I wore it skiing, um, so good, so good. Things I'm currently working on I'm knitting Alex a pair, another pair of boot socks. So these are Patton's Croy and the Turquoise Stripes colorway. I actually think um, Taylor from uh, Wool Needles Hands, uh, she has a podcast called Wool Needles Hands. Um, 
yeah, Taylor just knit a these for her dad, I think. So that was kind of funny that we were knitting the same socks at the same time. It's kind of fun to watch her uh, episodes while I was knitting these. <laughs> um, but these are for Alex. I have this one done and the foot's a bit long. So he tried them on and he can just pull them up and it's okay um, because then that just makes his leg a little longer and his foot a little shorter, but they don't fit him perfectly. There's almost, there's like a half inch extra on the foot. So almost an inch. Um, so I might rip these back and take out a little bit of foot length. We'll see, but I'm gonna cast on the next one for him soon. And then what else am I working on? I'm working on my test knit for um, Hunt Hand Knits. I think it's Mary Hunt. I should probably know that since I'm test knitting for her, right? Yeah, <laughs> that would be good information. Um, but it's Hunt Hand Knits. And she has designed this absolutely stunning cowl. Um, this is the Owl Nouveau cowl. Um, it's an Art Nouveau style design and it's stunning, right? I'm almost done. This is actually my favorite owl. <laughs> so it's got three owls and she's my favorite. And I'm using the Ochre and Barn Owl kit by Ash and Bumble, who uh, has partnered um, for this design. So Ash and Bumble has several different kits for this cowl, um, but this will be released March 3rd, March 4th. It'll, this, this design will be released at the beginning of March and it's just absolutely beautiful. This is my very first time doing stranded color work and I'm having so much fun with it. Um, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. It's like painting with yarn. <laughs> so, uh, and barn owls are my favorite. I love barn owls. So when I saw there was a barn owl test knit available and that it was Art Nouveau, um, I was like, yes, please. And I feel very, very fortunate and, um, just very grateful that I get to test for her. Um, the testnet group has been so awesome. Everyone's been so friendly and there's like a chat group on Instagram and it's been really fun. I'm keeping this in my puff stitch. Is it puff stitch one? It's just puff stitch, but I think like her username is puff stitch one. But this is my puff stitch barn owl project bag, which is just perfect. I've kept several projects in this now <laughs> because I love barn owls. Um, and then I'm keeping my chart in this wonderful contraption. I don't wanna show you the chart really, um, but you can tell, I'll show it to you kind of like this. You can, it's got these magnets to keep it on, but then it's got this long magnet that kind of helps you keep track of what row of the charts that you're on. Uh, and that's great, but this is by Knitter's Pride. Yeah, this is a Knitter's Pride product. I got the smaller version. They do have a larger version of this, but look how cute. Look how cute that is. And there's a little pouch in here that zips and a little pen or pencil holder. It's just completely perfect. And it's been really, really handy while I've been doing this cowl. Um, I'm really grateful that I found this when I did. Um, I found it two days before I got no, I found it like two or three days after I got my yarn for my cowl and um, yeah, then I bought it and put the chart on it and away we went. So that's been amazing. So that's been set up in my little cozy corner this winter. Other things to share with you guys. What else am I working on? I am working on one other thing. Where are it? Where? Where are you? Oh, right here. This is another puff stitch bag. This is my Luna Moth puff stitch bag because I also love Luna Moths. Um, it's very fortunate that when I really love something, uh, I don't know, it tends to become popular, <laughs> uh, which is really fortunate for me because then there are more products for it. Like I've always loved alpacas and then alpacas became very popular and now I can get all the alpaca stuff. And the same with Luna Moths and barn owls, etc. Um, also, there's just a lot of products for all kinds of things these days. So. But it's got this beautiful chartreuse liner. But I cast this on um, two days ago. And this is uh, just a wrap that, 
what's this called? I think it's called the Elementary Wrap by Pearl Soho, and I've modified it a bit. I'm doing 10 stitches less. Um, the width is 10 stitches less than what the pattern calls for, and I'm adding in like lace panels and other things, like very simple lace, but um, I'm adding in stuff to it. <laughs> so the pattern is my guide, um, but not my law. Um, and I'm using this gorgeous, what inspired this is I got this beautiful uh, boucle yarn from on a D stash on Etsy, uh, and it was 200 grams of it. So it wasn't really enough to do like a bigger project. And I did want to do something other than just a cowl or a hat or mitts. Um, I decided I really wanted like a wrap. I really wanted a sweater, but <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. So I went back and forth between buying some more boucle to go with it because it is wool folk. Um, the flet, fleet, flit. I'm not really sure how exactly to say it, but it's their boucle. Um, the smaller, the DK boucle from Wolfolk, um, which is so amazingly soft and squishy. It's phenomenal. But I considered getting some more um, of just like a solid like pink colorway, like they have a blushy pink. But then I was thinking, mm, I've bought quite a bit of yarn so far this winter. Um, and I think I've got stuff in stash I can use. So I did pull some things from stash. I've got this Angora um, merino yarn that I dyed with avocados. Um, and then I'm holding that double with a Surrey silk um, in the tobacco leaf colorway. Um, and that is by Stella Luna Fiber Company. And, and then I've also found a Nanette Wake Studio one of a kind colorway yarn that was in my stash that's got this peachy pink. Um, so I'm gonna hold it double with the Surrey probably as well, um, like in the middle of the wrap. And so I'm just kind of piecing this together, seeing how it goes as I go. Um, it's completely inspired by the boucle yarn. I really wanted this to be a wrap. This is incredibly soft and squishy and amazing and wonderful. Um, and I've used this Surrey in a previous project. I used it for my Tulip Jumper by Melody Hoffman. And I had an extra skein of it and some extra from the jumper as well. And um, it's amazing. I wish that I had eight more skeins of this stuff because it's amazing. The colorway is amazing. The yarn is amazing. I love that yarn. So um, I'm happy that I'm getting to pair it with this wonderful boucle. Uh, and then the Netwake Studio yarn is, I have a mild obsession with it. So um, of course I'm putting it in something else because I put it in everything. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, and it's fun to use my hand dyed yarn as well, because uh, that was my first time experimenting with uh, dyeing in the kitchen with avocado skins and pits. So that's my very, very cozy boucle wrap that I am currently working on. And what else do I have to share with you guys? I feel like I'm going so fast, but I wanted this to just kind of be a check-in. Um, so I didn't want it to be a super long video. Let's see, what else am I going to be doing? So when I'm done with my owl cowl, um, I, which will probably be in the next few days because I am, you can see, like I'm past the top of her head and I am now getting, mm, I have like eight more rows. I have nine or eight more rows of color work and then I have the ribbing and I'm done and I can block her. Um, so I, I'm thinking about what to cast on next and what I am thinking I might do is either pull out my Stephen West twists and turns shawl and continue working on it because I'm really loving all of the hyper knit along stuff that I'm seeing from Stephen West. His Aurora cabin shawl is beautiful, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to start that one while I still have my twists and turns on the needles. Um, and every once in a while I see somebody come like, post their finished twist and turns and it's just so fun to see. So I think I'm gonna uh, try to finish up clue three, um, hopefully by the end of this month, but we'll see. So I think I'll work on clue three a little bit, um, but I also am thinking about what I'm gonna cast on next because I've got my wrap and I have like one sock for Alex and those are the only works in progress I have besides my twists and turns, which I'm just considering a long-term project. And um, yeah, because my owl cowl will be done in the next day or two. So I'm thinking of either casting on a crochet shawl 
I love the Embers Shawl by Express Expression Fiber Arts. The, the, the designer name, I can't remember, but Expression Fiber Arts has the design right now. Um, I'm also thinking about doing the Bandana Cowl by, I think that's also a Pearl Soho pattern. Um, so I might cast one of those on. I am also though considering um, casting on a Lace and Fade Boxy by Hohi Locatelli. So we'll see, um, that might be happening. I definitely will be casting one on very soon, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna cast that on next or if I'm gonna cast that on in March at some point. So we'll see, but I will have more to show you guys <laughs> um, presently. So those are all of my Yarny projects. Other things to just check in with you guys about. Um, I just kind of wanted to share some other aspects of coziness and hygge life that's been going on this winter. I've been drinking every single hot drink that there is. Um, this mug is my beautiful chartreuse mug from the Chattanooga Yarn Company. When I was in Chattanooga, I am did I be at this mug? Oh, I went to their grand opening actually. So yeah, I went to Chattanooga to um, see the grand opening of the new yarn shop. It is Chattanooga's only yarn shop. <laughs> and um, they opened up this fall, I think in October. Um, I think it was October 1st. I don't know why I remember that, but I can't remember anyway, whatever. Um, yeah, so I love this mug. I try to drink out of it as much as I possibly can. Um, I basically only use other mugs if this one's dirty. <laughs> because I love this color, it's so chirpy. Um, but then it's my only yarn mug as well. So let's see, I've been drinking every single hot drink. Um, I'm drinking hot chocolate like it's my job, but also a lot of tea. I've been really into coffee lately and I don't really drink tons of coffee usually, certainly not in the mornings. I kind of drink coffee around two or three in the afternoon when there's a natural cortisol dip in the body uh, because my body feels that dip. Um, but in the morning, I'm fine. I just want water in the morning. Um, I don't know. I've been craving coffee in the morning lately. And it's real weird. I think it's just because the mornings are cold. Let's see. So I've been doing lots of hot drinks, lots of candles. Um, this particular candle is very cool. This is from an Etsy seller. Uh, their shop is called Smells Like Books. And the scents are beautiful. Like they smell really lovely. And I think that they are soy candles. They're supposed to be pretty clean burning. Um, but this is the Valaris, the Valaris scent. I also have the Night Court scent and I got Alex the scent called Lost in the Stacks. Um, I'll probably be buying more candles from them. They smell beautiful, but also these two candles I got, Valaris and Night Court, are based on the book series I've been reading all winter. Um, I have the last book on hold on the Libby app, and I think I've got like another week to wait before it's available, and I'm real excited. I say reading. I'm listening to them on audiobook because I need to be able to knit at the same time and crochet. Uh, so yeah, the series that I'm reading or listening to is A Court of Thorn and Roses by, I think it's Sarah Mass. Ooh, I can put that in the description for you guys. And if I forget, you can remind me. Um, but... It's really good. Um, I've been thinking about reading it for like a year or two um, because it's a genre that I typically like. It's very um, high fantasy. There's a lot of magic. It's set, you know, back when there are, you know, castles and queens and swords and et cetera. Um, so that's a, that's like a genre I really enjoy. I don't love that it's a romance novel uh, I didn't realize that it was, and then as I'm reading it, I'm like, this sounds like a romance novel, and I was very skeptical, but then like halfway into the first book, I was completely hooked, because the universe she builds is great, the characters are really good, the, the storytelling is good, It's a it really is a great story, and a, she builds a really great, engaging universe. Um, yeah, it's it's super good. I'm not a big romance novel person, though, so when it gets to those little, like, adult bits. I just kind of like hurry through those parts. Not that there's anything wrong with them. I just don't really love them. <laughs> I would rather be reading something else. Um, and then I don't really, 
I'm just not a romance book person. Like, I, I don't need to know about how muscular his forearms are every eight pages. Um, I get it. He's in good physical shape. Delightful. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not my thing. If it's your thing, though, then you might really enjoy it. Um, and that's, that's not at all everything that's talked about in this book. I would not have continued reading this book if that was all they talked about. It is a really great story. The characters are wonderful. Um, the lore is great. And again, the universe that she builds is very thoughtfully done. It's, it is the best book series that I have read in quite a while. So um, the romancy portion aside, <laughs> um, it's a great, I do, and I don't mind like love interests. Like I don't mind that people are falling in love that's not my problem. I like my husband quite a lot. I enjoy him. Um, but yeah, again, I don't need to hear about his muscular shoulders all of the time. <laughs> so, and there is actually less and less of that as the books go on. Um, so anyway, it's a really good book series and it's been great. And I feel like it has been a major part of my winter happiness. <laughs> so I needed to mention it to you guys during our Huga check-in. Um, because it's been bringing me lots of joy. And seriously, on a cold winter night with my warm tea or hot chocolate, um, my candles, my yarn, and my book that's being read to me, I mean, really? It's like an idyllic winter's evening. Uh, what else have I been doing? Oh, in my idyllic winter's evening, I have also usually been covered by my heated blanket, which I have right here because we're in my cozy, my cozy crafty corner. So this is my heated blanket. I have another one that I just got um, from like a dirty Santa this uh, past holiday and um, it's white, but because I have three Great Danes and I live in the land of mud, uh, this is the one I will continue using until it dies. And then we'll break out the white one. But I really wanna use the white one, but he works fine for now. And I like the blue and white. Um, let's see, other things. I've been cooking soups and casseroles every week because winter food. Um, I'm very much an assembly cook. I don't really like to stand at the stove. So anything I can just kind of throw into one container and then heat <laughs> and walk away from and knit some more, like that's my jam. So casseroles and soups have been plentiful this winter um and then some activities that i've been doing um as well i did go skiing a couple weeks ago which is great that was the first time i've been skiing in like 15 years maybe more <laughs> um and it was super fun i really really enjoyed it i did not expect to enjoy it because i'd only been skiing one other time in my life and i definitely ran into an elderly person and knocked him over during that ski trip so that wasn't ideal and i didn't know what to expect this time but it was fine i didn't fall even one time which was very surprising to me <laughs> um i don't really have any explanation for that other than i think that my fear uh, repelled me from the snow and um, I also I dance so for those of you who have been following for a while you know I dance um, regularly I just had a performance last week <laughs> so that's my other big thing I do in life uh, I work and I knit and I dance and um, I also teach yoga but I honestly dance more than I teach yoga these days so anyway I think that all that body awareness <laughs> really helped me and then my just fear of falling and injuring myself also like repelled me from the ground. So that's the only explanation I have, but skiing was great. Um, and I really want to do more like winter outdoorsy things because I think that that's a really great way to engage with the season in a fun way. Um, and it also just makes the cozy indoor time e even more uh, cozy and sweet because it's cold outside. So that was really great. The other thing that I did that I'm gonna throw in here because it's a really fun, um, it's a really fun like physical activity when it's really hot or really cold outside um, because you can do it indoors and it's rock climbing. I went to an indoor rock climbing gym and had so much more fun than I thought I was going to. And it was great. Um, and for that kind of thing too, like I think for me, I have a tendency in the winter to kind of hole up like a badger and 
not move from my cozy corner. So I need to like get myself out and moving and doing things so that my body doesn't like freeze up over the winter and become arthritic. Um, <laughs> Cause there is that chance. So um, yeah, finding things to do that are active that don't require going outside because that's not always an option. Again, I lived in, I live in the land of the mud in the winter. So it is raining more than half of the days of the winter here. Um, and so it's cold, muddy rain. I don't want to go outside in that. So indoor climbing gym is really fun. You know, I also dance and I do yoga. So I, I try to get more movement in the winter, but I have to like be intentional in the winter in a way that I don't have to be so intentional the other seasons because it's easier to move um, for me in the other seasons. So uh, yeah, that's something I've been doing. <laughs> and it's been bringing a lot of um, joy to me and it's also getting me socializing with people, which is good for me because I tend to be a little bit of a hermit. Um, yeah, so anyway, I think those were all of my things to share with you guys. I don't think I've got anything else. This is already longer than I planned for it to be, but that's probably okay because I haven't posted a video in quite a while. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this little make-along check-in with me. Uh, I really want to hear what you are making, so if you want to comment down below, what are you making that is hygge-ish, even if you're not participating in the make-along? Like, what are you making that's cozy or bringing you joy this winter? Um, what are you doing just in your life? this winter that's bringing you coziness and joy or, or connection or um, peacefulness or rest. Um, I've been trying to do a lot of resting when I can because my work was so incredibly busy for a couple of weeks. So I've really taken advantage of my little badger hole and have been like just covering myself in cozy, peaceful knitting and crocheting whenever I can. <laughs> uh, what have you guys been doing this winter? And how are you? Just how are you doing this winter? Winter's hard for a lot of people, which was the main reason why I wanted to do a make-along in the winter. Um, there's some other really great make-alongs happening at this time of year, um, but I kind of just wanted to do my own as well, just to add to it. So what are you up to and how are you doing? I'm going to pause this for now and I will see you guys soon in another video. I'll try to have a podcast up in the next week or two for you because I really want to chat with you guys some more. I was so much chattier than I anticipated being in this video, but I think it's because I missed you. So hopefully I can get a video up pretty soon for you guys. Um, check out the hashtag on Instagram. It's the mindful knitter Huga Mao on Instagram. And we also do have a, um, a whatchamadili in the Ravelry group for it. <laughs> What's it called? A tab? Oh gosh. We have a place where you can chat about it in the Ravelry group too. Um, and then I also just posted this morning, I think, um, a reel about this guy. So you can see all of the yarn and beautiful sunlight um, and check him out because he's beautiful and cozy. So I will end here. I am so happy to get to hang out with you guys. I hope you're having a lovely winter and a cozy hygge make along. And I will see you guys again soon. Bye. <laughs>